Okay, last episode we took a photograph, used the photograph as a tool to break the, us out of the thinking that this is a flat image and um, give us the illusion that we were looking into a three-dimensional space and that every time we added a marking uh, on the page we were reinforcing the illusion of um, this being a three-dimensional space rather than a flat page. Uh, but we've taken off the training wheels, uh, we're in the deep end, and here we are with a blank page. So our first objective is to get us back into the feeling of the photograph. How do we get that feeling where we are in fact dealing with a three-dimensional space rather than a flat page? So the first thing we need to do is we need to trigger the sensation of depth. And we'll do that by introducing spatial information. So every time you create a marking on the page, uh, that marking should convey a certain amount of information that reinforces the illusion of depth. Now, we perceive we, we perceive the position of a point in space. Anytime I, you know, I, I'm talking about points, not objects. I'm just talking about theoretical locations. So re, we perceive the position of a point in space, where it is in three-dimensional space, by its location relative to the locations of other points in the frame. And when I talk about the frame, we're talking about wonderful 2D land, this you know flat page. Um, they are two separate things. The location of a position in space is different from its position in the, in the frame. So just by adding points, one point alone is not enough to give you a sense of depth and perspective. Another point may not be enough to do it either. But if I keep adding points, If I allow these points off in the distance to, to tend very close to each other and the, ten, the points that are out here to spread apart, I can get the feeling that, you know, I've introduced depth information. I've, the position of points, we, we get the sense that when points are close together, they are far away from us. But when points spread apart, you know, we get, the, we get the sense that they are close to us. Okay, So pretty neat, you know, just by drawing dots and putting dots close, closer to each other, I can give you the, the sense that, you know, these things are all far away from us. And by spacing them out, we get the sense that they get close to us. So their position of the uh, so so this illusion is all dependent on these points being placed relative to one another um, to to get that sensation of depth. So the next thing, uh, the position, rotation, and size of an object are conveyed by the position of its points relative to one another. That's not so. That's that's you know that's that's not as important as realizing. Um, the position, rotation of a size and size of an object relative to us. Um, we need to keep an eye on our own vantage point. Where are we in relation to the object? And so an object, you can take an object and break it down into a bunch of points. And by positioning its points, you know, in the frame, you know, relative, uh, you, you can figure out where an object is relative to us. So, you know, if I were to take a, a cube, and put its points close to one another. You know, we get the sense that the cube is far away from us. And if I take that same cube you know, we look at it like that. The way I've placed its points, you know, this is telling us that the cube is, is rotated, you know, but rotated in relation to us. Um, our, 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 our vantage point on the object has changed. It's different now because we see a different picture. Um, if I take, say, a bird's eye view, let's, uh, let's do a, a bird's eye view of this. Um, if this is us, you know, this is our vantage point, we look at the cube, we have a certain field of view. 
we can only see things within a certain angular cone. So this cube, if I draw a frame, the position of this, you know, we figure out where all the points of this cube are relative to us in the frame. Well, if this is the center, well, hey, looks looks like the cube is slightly off center, and I just figure out where the points are. These points are slightly over to the side. The distance here to here is actually lesser than the distance here to here, so I've allowed this these points to spread out a bit. I've made these points get close together. Also, these points over here, since they're further away from us, I can allow them to be a little little closer together. Oops. And now we get the sense that the, the cube is rotated. So we get the sense of, of the size of an object relative to us. We get to figure out how much it's rotated, how much how big it is, um, you know, its location in space. It's dependent on where these points are relative to each other and where they are um, in relation to the frame. You know, are they in the center of the frame? Are they on the left side, the right side, you know, of the frame? Um, everything is, is all relative. So, you know, I guess if I take this, this cube and I slide it over, just to illustrate that, we have a little bit more time. So I, if I take this cube and I move it over to the side, then, you know, this point here, if we just take a slice like this and we map all of these points. We can figure this point would be here, that point would be there, this point would be about here. Well, this corner, the far corner, is going to be about here. The near corner is going to be, um, you know, a bit closer to us. You know, the far corner is way back here. The near cor corner is going to approach us, and it's nearly touching the edge of the frame. And we can figure out this one, this corner's over there and that corner is over there. So let's figure out where that one is first. And now this one we can figure is is slightly outside the frame. The thing about the frame is that it's just it's it's um it's a point of reference that you can use. You don't have to stay within the frame. You can draw outside of the frame if you want it to. It's merely a point of reference with which to hold all the other points of the object. Anyway, uh, I guess that's all I wanted to say this episode. Uh, next episode, we'll deal with actually creating a, a three-dimensional room, um, you know, from a blank page, and continue adding objects to it like we did with uh, with the photograph. Anyway, I guess I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching 10 Minute Drawing Techniques. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please visit us at 10minutedrawing.blogspot.com to post your feedback, support the series, and view other episodes.